today on Karamo. I've never seen that. It's a lingerie basketball league. A thong in a jersey. Lies and betrayal have driven a wedge between this mother and daughter. Playing basketball and thong. And I did that for you. It's like you pimping me out. No, it was your decision. I lost everything because I shouldn't have followed you. I've done everything. Somebody got to. Can you tell your daughter that you're sorry for not hearing what she actually needs? I apologize if I force you to do anything that you didn't want to do. Could you please forgive me? <laughs> her social media success is paying the bills. I do get slut shamed a lot. But her boyfriend is feeling belittled. I have to deal with the emotions of seeing her like that. I'm obviously not with you for what you could give to me. I'm with you because I love you. Welcome, everyone, to the Garamo Show. As they say, sex sells. But today, all that sexiness and all those dollars is what's driving a wedge between a relationship. My next guest, LaShawn, says that the buns and basketball is what brought her and her daughter, Julissa, together. But now, buns and basketball is what's tearing this mother and daughters apart. I know y'all like, what is buns and basketball? <laughs> Trust me, y'all about to find out. All right, listen, LaShawn, please come on out and talk to me real quick. I can have a hug. How are you doing? You look amazing. Thank you. Woo! Um, usually I never ask someone their age, but I think in this moment, would you mind if I ask you your age? That's fine. How old are you? I am 46. 46. <laughs> Gorgeous. Thank you. Okay, so, LaShawn, tell me about this betrayal before we get into the sort of the uh, buns and basketball. The betrayal about my daughter, Jalisha, um, it, it, it was just a dagger in my heart that she started this with me and I feel like she should finish it yeah. um, because we always had a great relationship. Yeah, so she started Buns and Basketball with you. Yes. Yeah, tell us a little bit about what that is. Buns and Basketball is a lingerie basketball league, yeah. which, uh, which considered we wear thongs and we wear a jersey shirt. Okay, a thong and a jersey. Listen, I'm all about it, girl. Empower yourself, okay? Hold on, okay. So I just wanna know, how did you come up with this idea? How I came up with it, actually, um, I am a professional uh, model, sexy model. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I was a basketball coach for 13 years, made high school varsity in eighth grade. So I always loved the game. Mm -hmm. So I just combined um, that as my platform to create sexiness and a sport together. Yes. Listen, I love to create your own lane, OK? Because <laughs> I've never seen that. So how do you convince other people to play basketball on a phone? A lot of women come to me and they're like, yo, I really had a low self-esteem and I feel like this right here would build my confidence up. And actually, I built a lot of ladies. I inspired a lot of women to show what they have, their curves or no curves. Um, so all sides matter. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think there's something beautiful. Yeah, give it up. I think there's something very beautiful about the fact that through a game, you are empowering women. Yes. And I think that's the most important thing at the end of the day because some people will look at this and judge, but if yeah. these women are actually getting a workout, they are actually feeling empowered. Yes. I think that's the most important thing for me to say, great, if it makes you feel sexy, if it makes you feel good, I support it 100%. Yes. Now, when it came to your daughter, she said you got her to convince her to play on the team. Yes. And to join this with you. How did, how did that come about? I guess she was broke. Okay. <laughs> okay, she was literally broke, needed money, and this was a platform for her to actually make money. Anyone that, that was, that's a part of this platform yeah. has grown. Got it. You know, you got other opportunities that people might say, hey, you got to look for this or whatever. How long have you wanted her to actually play in the league? Um, actually, this league's been going on for like three years now. So you and she's to play been, from yeah, she's been with me from day one. At first, she, she didn't want to play. And then when she saw that, hey, this is a moneymaker situation, she took it. Got it. And so what was her hesitation? 
At the beginning, because you said she didn't want to play originally. <laughs> Oh, um, because I guess she didn't want her buns hanging out. Oh, got it. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, okay. So what happened in the end where she decided and said, I can't do this no more? She got with this guy, my coworker, and I just feel like he pushed her away from our uh, mother and daughter love. Were the two of you really close before? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like, describe I taught relationship. Her, I taught her everything. I was her basketball coach, her mentor. Her everything. We yeah. was, we're if you see us together, we look like sisters. How do you feel that um, that your daughter quit the team? It felt like a dagger in my heart, man. Yes. I really work hard for this. Yeah. To build a platform yeah. for her. <laughs> Cause when, when a you... mother and daughter has a bond like no other, uh, that's that's how a relationship was basically. Yeah, you're tight. Real, real tight. It was just very disappointing. Um, uh, you, you know, I, I, I never quit on her. She, she just quit on me. Those are specific words. Yeah. You never quit on her, but you felt like she quit yeah. on you. Um, yeah. Is she your only child? No, I have a son also. You have a son, but there's yeah. like that mother-daughter bond. Yeah. Um, is there father in the picture? Yes. He yes. is in the picture. Yes. So that even makes that mother-daughter bond even yeah. tighter. But we're not together. Yeah, yeah, of course not. Yeah, but I'm saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying with your daughter, <laughs> just to have her, you two together, it's like... That, yeah, because that I didn't special. have a mother. I didn't have a mother or father. You know, I was in the foster system all my life from the age of two all the way till I graduated uh, cosmetology school. Um, yeah, and I just... It, it's just hurtful. Yeah. You know, don't let someone else come in the picture between something that's that's tight and yeah. that's that's unconditional. Yeah. So have you tried to reach out to her? Have you tried to talk to her? I have, and it just seemed like it's still, it's still something there missing. Not like it was when we was real close. Yeah. And so this guy, is she still seeing him? No, thank you, Lord. Okay. <laughs> You're like, no, <laughs> thank you, Lord. And so since he's been gone, has it made the relationship a little bit better? Yes, yeah, a lot better. Yeah, a lot but better. still, but it's still this, something. this thing of betrayal. Yes. Yeah, okay then. So let's go ahead and bring her out and see if there's a bigger issue. So come on out, Jalisha. <laughs> nice to meet you. So um, I know that my producer told me you're backstage crying. What was going on? Because I can see you're still emotional now. I just want her to say the truth. Playing basketball and phone. And I did that for you. It's like you pimping me out. Can you tell your daughter that you're sorry for not hearing what she actually needed? I've done everything. Somebody got to. <laughs> but about my daughter, Jalisha. She started this with me, and I feel like she should finish it. She got with this guy. I just feel like he pushed her away from our uh, mother and daughter love. It felt like a dagger in my heart, man. Yes. <laughs> I never quit on her. She, she just quit on me. My producer told me you were backstage crying. What was going on? I just want her to say the truth. She got me playing in the buns of basketball. That took forever for me to just say yes, because that's not me. I'm not into all that, you know, social media, entertainment, showing my body off, all that. And also, when I started, I wasn't broke. I had a good job, I had my own house, my own car. So you mean to tell me you didn't have, you had a job when, you, when we moved in together? Yes. No, I'm no, talking about didn't. before, but you said, when I started Buzz of Basketball, I was broke, right? Right. It not just get a, what, have my own money, <laughs> own car, nice, everything. Take care of myself. And I did that for you because you always want me to follow your lead, do whatever you do. And that's not me. You never ask me how I feel, what I want to do. So what do you want to do? <laughs> I just want to do music, have a normal life, and not worry about what other people got to say about me or you. 
how long did you play the with Buntham basketball? Like a year and a half, probably almost, yeah, about two. And was it a happy time for you? At the time, yes. I met wonderful people, but, you know, at the same time, when it come to, you know, game time, I'm Did you like, like playing basketball? Yeah, I like playing basketball. Okay, so you did like playing? Yes, I did. That was the only reason why I continued to play. Did you like being with your mom around that time? Yeah. Okay. You've been receiving a lot of judgment about the Buntham Basketball League because you said you said you don't want to worry about what other people have to say. Tell me about well, like the comments you get. It's more so like, oh, um, you're a porn star now, you're a stripper, and that's the whole reason why I got off of social media now. Because people think they know me, and they don't. Yeah. And I want her to really know me. Do you feel like your mom controls you? Yes, very much so. In what ways? Um, I'm going to say this. It's to the point to where now, you know, we ain't talking. You know, um, it's just been a, a wedge between us to where she has no control over me now. Every time she asks me to do something when in the garden of entertainment, I do it. But again, I never want to do that. It's like you pimping me out, using me. How does it make you feel hearing your daughter say those things? A lot of things that people do in this world, it is for entertainment, but people judge them a certain kind of way. I mean, maybe it might sound like I probably, not, not totally that word pimping, but I just felt like it was a platform that I it's a way want. to, I understand, but, um, but if something feels... happened to me, this is, this is let down to you. So you don't have to play, you can just control it. If something happened to me, well, I'm leaving I want, I'm this. glad you use that word control because I know that you, in your mind, you're saying you're setting up something for her future. Yeah. And I do believe that like a foundation is important for you. Yeah. But your daughter is saying that as you're building the foundation, she feels controlled. She feels as if you're not hearing her. And that's what I want to know. Because well, I'm, I'm not taking away from you building the foundation. I know yeah. you're doing the best what you can. Yeah. But talk to her about that. She says she feels controlled by you. Like I you apologize if you feel like that. But like I say, it's all enough but love, baby. People get judged all the time but, if you good, but, do good or bad. But that's not the love I want. Well. What type of love do you want? Yeah. I just want her to be a mother. She, she don't know how to do that. Wow. Everything is money to her. So. With your music career, who, who started your um, music career to make sure that you can get into a platform? Who's, who helped you start all this? And who got fine. you out there? And that's but who fine. got you out there? That's fine. But Did I get you out there? Yes, yes or no? But Thank you. I'm out there because of a name that you made for yourself. Not, oh, Julie should so say, So people oh, don't know you? They know me by, oh, your mom still does this, that, and that. Oh, it ain't nothing really good that you really saying because this how you know me. So all these, now, Buns and Basketball only been three years. Mm -hmm. So how was our mother before this? You how did I treat you? Weren't. you? How did I treat you? You weren't. How, Lily? It's money to you. Everything is about money. The day I turned. Have you ever been without? You always drove all the fancy cars right. and everything. You 15 years old right. and on a whole Mercedes Benz. Who, who right. has that? Right. But again, it's material stuff that I didn't, I don't want. So, so if. <laughs> well, you, basically you could have fooled me that you didn't want the luxury stuff because I drive a, a beat up car to make sure you have the luxury stuff. Right. Playing basketball and phone. And I feel like it's my fault because I shouldn't have followed you. Can you tell your daughter that you're sorry for not hearing what she actually needed? I've done everything. Somebody got to. She got me playing. That took forever for me to just say yes. I'm not into all that social media, entertainment, showing my body off. You always want me to do whatever you do. So what do you want to do? <laughs> Have a normal life. It's like you pimping me out. I just want her to be a mother. She don't know how to do that. Have you ever been without? Because I drive a, a beat up car to make sure you have the luxury stuff. Everything with money. Do you know how to do without getting me so, so 
everything else, like cars. And that's back then. I'm grown now. So after you quit the league, did your relationship change with your mom? And, or how did your mom change? When I, when I quit the league, the whole thing is, that, per that guy that she said she didn't like, he made me realize I was worth more than doing what I was doing. Self-love. <laughs> that I could be so much bigger than playing basketball and phone. I know earlier that when, after you quit, your mom said she didn't kick you out, that you left. And is that what happened for you? <laughs> Not at all. What happened? What happened was the same guy she said she don't like. She didn't want him coming to the house to see me. So instead, we went to his house. No, the reason why, because <laughs> he would come there every single day. I would see him in the morning, noon, and night. I'm cooking. He eating, <laughs> eating the food. He drinking. He just enjoying himself like this is his, it's his house. Yeah. But this so is a conversation I approach him. you had with me. I not approach him, him without because me knowing. I felt like he the man. So if you the man, you um you you take that female to your situation. I don't have no privacy. I gave her the master bedroom. Mm -hmm. I'm always catering to her. Yeah, I want to ask you a question. Do you feel abandoned? Yeah, but I'm okay. Why do you feel abandoned? Um, when you stopped talking to me, when you were the only person I could come talk to, that broke me. Um, I came down there with you to Columbia because we were supposed to grow together, do things together. I lost everything. And I feel like it's my fault because I shouldn't have followed you. Yeah, because I should I should have known better. I followed Jolie. I should have stayed I where I was. I always do what you tell me No, to do. you don't. You felt like you was my mother. Somebody got to. Well, it's, it's kind of hard to say that because I was, I grown up without, without a mother. Mom. Yeah. I done been to 15 different homes, shelter homes, foster homes, group homes. I, I done been through everything. You think... I'm not gonna sacrifice my life and my time for my children. Yeah, I get it. I've done everything. <laughs> yeah, I'm listening to this now and um, I'm gonna take a break really quickly because hearing both of your sides, I understand where this relationship has derailed. So listen everyone, we'll be right back, so stay with us. <laughs> Can you tell your daughter that you're sorry for not hearing what she actually needed? I apologize. If I force you to do anything that you didn't want to do, could you please forgive me? <laughs> you are the fire. Get off my stage. that she said she didn't like, he made me realize I was worth more than doing what I was doing. When you stopped talking to me, when you were the only person I could talk to, that broke me. You felt like you was my mother. Somebody got to. There's been a lot of things that I've heard from both of you. And the beauty of me being an outside perspective is that I can hear your point of view and I can hear your point of view. You grew up in a situation where you didn't have, and you just wanted somebody to be there for you, to give you a foundation, to support you. And so as you grew up, that is how you felt would be the best thing to do for your daughter. Acts of service and gifts. I'm gonna do for you, I'm gonna do for you. Like, that's you showing your love. And you received it. And you got all of that stuff and you benefited from it. And that's the truth of the matter. Yeah. Even hearing your mother say she gave her master bedroom up, so that you and your man can sleep in it. We know at the end of the day that she's not a bad mother. But I also understand your perspective. You're saying, Mom, you're giving me, giving me, giving me because that's what you thought was the foundation I needed, but that's not the foundation I needed. You're giving her the foundation you needed. 
but she's telling you that she needs a different foundation. She's telling you that, that I needed you just to talk to me, to hear me, to understand that even though you gave me these things that I do believe you appreciate it. Absolutely. That you actually wanted her to just say, what do you want? How am I affecting your life? And this doesn't make you a bad mom because you were working your butt off to, literally working your butt off to try to give her a life that you didn't have. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to be funny, but like, but at the, the rate of the matter is that she was saying, I don't need that. I just want you to talk to me. I will say this to you is I want you to at least be able to leave here and letting your mom know that you can acknowledge that she did love you and that she did try her best. And if you don't feel that way, I don't want you to say it. But do you feel that your mom tried her best with you? Yeah. Can you at least say that to your mother? Mm, I know you tried. You really did. I wouldn't be here without you, of course. That's a step. Because I needed you to hear that as a mother to know you weren't a bad mom. But now what I need you to do is to acknowledge, yes, I was giving you things, but I wasn't hearing you when you said you needed something else. And I'm sorry. Can you tell your daughter that you're sorry for not hearing what she actually needed? I'm sorry for not hearing what you actually needed and what you wanted. I, I've done my best. And I, I'm sorry, I was fooled that. I thought I was doing the right thing. Um, I didn't make you do anything that you didn't want to do. There's a part of that that's not fully true. And the reason being is because as your daughter, I'm sure there was an unconscious pressure that you felt to have to make sure mom feels like I'm there for her. Yeah. You actually use language at the beginning of this, which is she quit on me. And that makes a child feel like if I quit on mom, if I speak up about what I need, mm -hmm. she's going to reject me. Yeah. That's where those abandonment issues come from. Am I hitting it on the nail? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so can you apologize and say, I actually now realize that I didn't mean to force you to do things you didn't want to do, and I won't ever do that again. I apologize if I felt like I forced you to do anything that you didn't want to do. Could you please forgive me? <laughs> I love you. I was I would never quit on you. Just Talk to me more, and I'll be more understanding. Okay? <laughs> I love you. Love you. <laughs> Before I go, I just want to know, do you feel heard now? Do you feel seen? Yeah, I've never been able to come out and tell her that. Yeah. Do you feel like she actually heard you? No. Yeah, because I do too. And I think that y'all gonna be okay. I can see the love here. I can see the love, I can see it. And I'm sad that this moment had to happen, but I'm also actually very happy that y'all finally got a chance to be real with each other, yes. be transparent with each other, and start the foundation. Thank All right, you. you're welcome. All right, good luck, ladies. All right. Coming up, y'all, so Rosalie is catching in on her newfound fame on OnlyFans and TikTok, and it's paying the bills, but it's causing a lot of drama with her relationship. So we're going to talk about that because that's going to be a good one. Don't go anywhere, y'all. We'll meet her now. Her social media success is paying the bills. I do get slut shamed a lot. But her boyfriend is feeling belittled. I have to deal with the emotions of seeing her like that. I'm obviously not with you for what you could give to me. I'm with you because I love you. We have been talking about sex, lies, and betrayals. And my next guest, Rosalie, says she is cashing in on her newfound fame on OnlyFans and TikTok. Rosalie says pretty privilege is paying the bills. But when it comes to her relationship, it's causing a lot of drama. Please, everyone, help me welcome Rosalie to the show. <laughs> How 
are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Ooh, good to meet you. <laughs> nice so I, to meet you. Yes, you look amazing. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. So let me start off. What does pretty privilege mean? Pretty privilege. All right. So I feel like pretty privilege for me means going out with my friends and having somebody approach me to buy me a drink, but I make him buy all my friends a drink too. It's not only about your looks. I feel like pretty privilege is also about your confidence and being smart as well. Mm -hmm. Like you could be pretty, but if you're dumb, then you know you have to be <laughs> smart as well. Yeah. So yeah. yeah listen, I I respect it. So you have an OnlyFans account. Yes. I and do. I respect that as well. What do you actually do on your OnlyFans account? Um, on my OnlyFans, you can find pictures of me in a bikini, in lingerie. I twerk on my OnlyFans, but I don't do no nudity whatsoever okay. on my OnlyFans. Yes, oh my yes, yeah, 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 get it, get it, get it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like it. All right. Um, so, what kind of requests do you get on your on your OnlyFans? I get all kinds of requests from men, but I only do whatever I'm comfortable with. But I have requests for pole dancing. I have requests for just random feet pictures. Okay. Yeah, that's me. What is the craziest, strangest <laughs> request you've gotten on OnlyFans? Um. Probably like men that, yeah, like my feet pictures. I don't feel like that's so crazy, but I've gotten requests that like men want me to like lick my feet on a video for them. And yeah. that's not something I'm too comfortable with. Yeah. I'll send the feet picture, but I'm not about to lick my own feet. Listen, I just love the <laughs> fact that you are so empowered. You know what I mean? Like, I think sometimes it's easy for us to judge someone who might start an OnlyFans account. Because I see the sort of the cultural conversation right now is like, if a young woman has an OnlyFans, there's something wrong. Or like, they want to slut shame her and stuff. And for me, I'm like, if you are making a choice and feel empowered to make money through your body, through, you know, I'm from a different breed. And I think it's important to say, Kudos to you. Thank you. Yeah, do what you want to do. I appreciate that. Yeah, Thank seriously, you. I just want to let you know that. Thank you so much. Chris. Um, what were you gonna say? I I do get slut shamed a lot. I'm like, sure. there's comments on my Instagram all the time, like, oh, how do you have a boyfriend that's okay with you showing your body? But for me personally, I don't judge nobody yeah. at all. But on my OnlyFans, I don't do nudity, so I just feel like. You're slut shaming me, but I'm doing things that you can see at a beach. Yeah. Or at a pool. Like it's... Or on somebody's regular Instagram account. Exactly. And they're not getting paid for it, but I'm making sure I'm getting paid for it. Hey, so what's the problem? Hey, talk about it. What's the problem? Talk about it. Talk about it. So, how does your boyfriend feel about this? Um, he's he's supportive. For the most part, he's definitely supportive. The only part that we clash heads on really is just the fact that I'm the breadwinner in our relationship is something that I wouldn't say he's jealous about it. I don't feel like jealous is the right word for it, but it's definitely something that kind of makes him insecure. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful yeah. couple. That's my baby. How long y'all been together now? <laughs> we make four years in November. Oh, nice. OK. <laughs> and so, because I can tell already that you have a hustler mentality. You're going to, you know, part of your pretty, pretty privilege is that you're a hustler. For sure. How long have you been hustling? So I left my house when I was 13 years old. I've had a job ever since. And just having all those jobs has really made me realize how much I hated working for somebody else. Yeah. So I wanted to find a way where I could be my own boss. And I feel like that happened when I met my boyfriend. Is he jealous of the money you make? Yeah, I don't feel like jealous is the right word for it because he's still extremely supportive. But it does make us bump heads sometimes. Whereas, you know, like, I, I, I bring in the money, so like I'm the one that's paying the bills and stuff majority of the time. But I want to I want to say this: when we first got together, he was the breadwinner. But in this new era of social media being so powerful and OnlyFans and TikTok, and it was just it's just easier now for me to make the money, and I just want yeah. him to be okay with that. Like yeah. it's okay, because I feel like society and just probably the way he was raised makes him feel like men have to be the breadwinner in relationships. But if I don't have a problem with it, I feel like he shouldn't have a problem with it either. Agreed, agreed. So why do you want to address this now? Um, because I feel like right now is only the start of it. It's only the start of it. I'm only gonna get bigger. Yeah. And I'm only going to be making more money. So we need to dead this now because he is somebody that I want to be with for the rest of my life. So Yeah. I appreciate, again, like I said, that spirit of, like, I'm going to keep conquering. I can, I, I'm sh I can tell where this comes from. Um, and I applaud it. So everyone, listen, when we come back, her boyfriend Jeremiah is here. And I'll find out what he thinks about her making more money, about her OnlyFans, all of that after the break. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> I have to deal with the emotions of seeing her like that. I'm obviously not with you for what you could give to me. I'm with you because I love you. 
where my father was the breadwinner. It's like the roles are reversed here. Who pays when you two go out? I pay, but I be using her card, and it's yeah. kind of embarrassing <laughs> for me. You are the car. Get off my stage. find pictures of me in a bikini and lingerie. I twerk, but I don't do no nudity whatsoever. Is he jealous of the money he makes? It does make us bump heads sometimes. I'm the one that's paying the bills and stuff majority of the time. All right, everyone, I am back with Rose Lee. Please welcome her boyfriend, Jeremiah, to the show. <laughs> How you doing, man? Nice to meet you, yeah. Hold on, do y'all coordinate? Yes, Okay, it's do. cute. I like it. I like a cup of that coordinate. So I want to know, why does it bother you that she makes more money? It bothers me that she makes more money than me because I grew up in the household where my father was the breadwinner in my family, and he worked two jobs, and my mom would be home cleaning up, cooking, and all that stuff. But it's like the roles are reversed here in our relationship. So you stay at home cooking and cleaning? <laughs> Yeah, that's, <laughs> I do that too. I don't have a problem with taking care of everything that needs to be done, but it's like I'm just not used to it because at first I was the breadwinner. Mm -hmm. Who yeah. pays when you two go out? <laughs> I pay, but I be using her card, and it's yeah. kind of embarrassing <laughs> for me because it's like I don't be hiding the money like that all the time. Yeah. Going back a little bit. She has an OnlyFans. Yeah. Um, outside the money, how does that make you feel? And do you play a role in her OnlyFans? I play a role in her OnlyFans because I take the videos, I come up with video ideas for a TikTok or whatever she does. But <laughs> I have to deal with the emotions of I have to deal with the emotions of seeing her like that and men like in her dms like let me see this let me see that and i gotta be the one taking those type of videos so that's interesting because I, I did think about the perspective of like the emotional toll it takes on you to take photos like this yeah. that's not just going to be shared between you two now it's going to be getting sent to other men yeah. so i want to focus a little bit on that what is that emotional toll that it takes on you does it make you how does it make you feel sometimes it makes me feel like insecure because I'm like, in my head, like my mom will play games with me like, damn, if this guy could get this from her, like what else can they do for her with a little bit more money? But I know that's just my mom. I know she's not that type of person. I would never. I would but never do anything to disrespect like, that relationship. It makes me feel like she's happy about, you know, she's doing that, but sometimes it plays with me because I'm like, damn, she got to do this. She has to send these type of photos to different men in order to get that money, and I just, get embarrassed sometimes about her posting it or when she like promotes her OnlyFans on Instagram. All my friends see it. I don't know who else is watching it. I just feel like sometimes you need to, like, and I talked to him about this as well. Sometimes he just needs to train his mind to be stronger than his emotions. Because at the end of the day, somebody always has something to say about anything anybody's doing. Even if they're doing something good, people have something to say. <laughs> so it's like. With these emotions, is there mistrust? Is there jealousy? Is there envy? What are the things that are happening? Um, I just get insecure sometimes. I see men like showering their girlfriend with money and clothes and jewelry and all that stuff and her birthday's coming up and I don't really even know what I'm gonna get her for her birthday. Yeah, so what's your biggest fear about Rose Lee making more money than you? Like if she ever gonna look down on me because I make less money. Why don't you ask her? Will you ever look down on me because I make less money than you? I'm obviously not with you for what you could give to me. I'm with you because I love you. And because, like, I didn't. <laughs> Did you hear that and receive that? Because the thing is, is that I know there's a lot of outside chatter. And there's always going to be a lot of outside chatter. But that's why I want you to just ask her right now. Because I think sometimes it's like, even with the outside chatter, you have to clear it out and just look at your girl and say, tell me. And so you heard her say, she not leaving me for that. And I know that there's always going to be people putting things in his ear. And there's, of course, I have people in my ear like, oh, your man should be the one making more money and stuff. But none of that matters to me. As long as what we have, we understand what's going on, I don't care about what nobody else has to say. Yeah. <laughs> How does it make you feel knowing that he's, like, thinking he can't even provide for your birthday? It kind of makes me kind of emotional 
to know that he feels that, that way, but I just wish that he understood that it's not about the materialistic things for me. What is it about for you? Tell him. I could do all of that myself. What matters to me is just having you there to support me. That's it. Like, is her independence kind of intimidating to you? When she says things like, I can do that by myself? Um, it's, I'm proud of her for having that, and I'm like happy that she's like that. But you know, sometimes I want her to like lean on me for some things, and I know Make that she's. Why are you telling me the same thing? I agree. If somebody at 22 would have been like, "Here's my card to pay for a meal," I'd have been like, "Thank you." <laughs> okay, I'd be like, "Thank you." Right? <laughs> Who pays when you two go out? <laughs> I pay, but I be using her card, and it's yeah. kind of embarrassing <laughs> for me. Is there mistrust? Is there jealousy? Is there envy? I just get insecure sometimes. I see men like showering their girlfriend with money, clothes, and jewelry, and I don't really even know what I'm gonna get her for her birthday. I, I agree with her. I agree. I agree. So that, as that, fine as I am, I feel like he's super fine too. Would Would you ever consider making your own friend? I'd be thinking about it sometimes. Yeah. But I don't really even know what I would do on there. I think he should do it. <laughs> Well, I mean, a woman just screamed right now and said, make it OnlyFans, so... Because he's fine. So clearly, That's why. Uh, <laughs> but I want to know from you, is there anything that you want to say to your girl? Um, say it with your chest. Don't be scared. I don't really know what to say right yeah. now. Yeah, it's the worst. Listen, I'm going to tell you this. Um, one of the things that I wish that someone would have told me when I was younger is don't listen to what your boys say. Oh my gosh, I wish I would have heard that so much younger and, and understood it because what she has mastered is this understanding and I think it comes from the fact that you had to survive from an early age. You had to realize that other people's words may not matter as much because they might disappoint you, you won't have to be on your own. And I'm sorry that you had to experience that. And without knowing what you've truly been through, I can gather and I'm pretty sure I'm kind of on the same page. And, but what you have gained is this sort of self-reliance and self-confidence. And I would just give to you to say, don't listen to these other people. You have a woman here who is, who is, who wants to take care of you. Listen, <laughs> I'm, I'm not, and not just take care of you, I mean like she's supporting you, she's loving you. Let me, let me tell you something. If when I was, cause how old are you? 22. If somebody at 22 would have been like, here's my card to pay for a meal, I'd have been like, thank you. <laughs> okay, I'd have been like, thank you, right? The problem that we have in our society is we make these gender roles that start to make men feel like they're emasculated if a woman is taking care of them, if a woman is independent, if a woman is competent. And I think we need to destroy that. We need to take that away. You as a man and who you are as a man is defined by how much love you give, how much honesty you're giving, how much support you're giving. And you're displaying every single day that you are a great man. So don't ever define yourself by how much money you make. You understand? Because what I've learned being 40 years old is that sometimes you have money and sometimes you don't. And so if you define yourself by materialistic things, you always are gonna play a game that you're never gonna win. But if you play a game where you are showing yourself to be loving and honest and supportive as you are doing, that game you're gonna win. You feel me? Thank you. So, Take your boys out of it, because all those boys to you that's like, oh, you letting your girls do OnlyFans? I promise you all of those boys are paying for your dinner. I promise you. Every single one of them is one over here looking at your girl like, damn, I wish that was mine. They might not say it. None of them is judging. They're that hating. Part. They're that jealous. Part. And so what I would suggest to you is just work on that insecurity. Like, every day, remind yourself that you are a great man. I think that's the first thing. You clearly have a woman here who says it. Do you think he's a good man? He's a great man. See, you continue to be empowered, strong, be the boss that you are. Okay. All right, just know that I live for you and I respect you very much. Thank you. Yes, I appreciate of course. that. You give it up for them, all right? <laughs> Y'all gonna be all right. Can we go twerk? Yeah, you know, I love to twerk, girl. That's all I do. Oh, you're talking about what's the. Tell my hands on your. I don't know if make it sound. What? All right.
right, everyone. Thank you so much for being with us. It was a little fun show, right? I had a good time today. All right, listen, everyone. Come back as always so we can keep doing what? Talking and growing. I love you all.